Welcome to Designer Digital's bi-weekly tip, March 20th, 2020. This week, how to create a letterpress effect with brushes in Photoshop. This week, we're continuing our series on ways to creatively use brushes like Katie Pertit's beautiful ledger journalers. Not only are digital brushes and stamps an easy way to add beauty and typography to your digital project, but they're also incredibly versatile. By trying different techniques, you can customize the brushes to get a wide array of effects. Leveraging the power of the full version of Photoshop, you can even create the popular letterpress effect. This is similar to debossing since it creates the illusion that the stamp has been pressed into the paper, causing an indention in the shape of the brush. I see this relief effect a lot in business cards and other printed materials, but you can bring it to your digital crafting projects as well. Here's how. The brushes at Designer Digitals are delivered as both PNG images and ABR brush files for loading into Photoshop or Elements. To follow along with this tip, open a PNG Word Art image. For the sample, I'm using Katie Pertit's Ledger Journaler sets. Also open a piece of textured digital cardstock. For the sample, I'm using a piece of paper from Katie Pertit's Farmhouse Christmas set. Target or select the cardstock layer and copy it by pressing Ctrl J on your keyboard. On a Mac system, that's Command J. Now you'll have two copies of the paper. Get the Move tool and drag the brush on top of the cardstock stack. Next, you'll want to drag that brush layer down between the two layers of cardstock over here in the Layers panel. Your brush image will disappear because it's now covered with the top paper. It'll be like a brush sandwich with the paper above and a paper below. Your next step is to digitally glue the cardstock to the brush image so that the brush looks like it's made out of the same paper as your background paper. So to do this, target the top layer and press Alt-Control-G on your keyboard. On a Mac system, that's Option-Command-G. Or you can choose Layer Create Clipping Mask from the menu bar. With the top layer still targeted, press Ctrl-E or on a Mac system, Command-E on the keyboard. This merges the top layer and the brush layer. So now you have just two layers in the Layers panel. At this point, you still can't see the brush. But in the Layers panel, make sure that you can see that the brush layer is covered with paper and that there is some transparency, the little checkerboards. Now you'll create the letterpress effect with styles. Target the brush layer and double click the blank area of the layer. So don't double click on the layer name or the icon, but bring up the layer styles dialog by double clicking somewhere outside of that on the layer. Now you can come down in the bottom left hand corner and choose show all effects so that you have all of the styles here to choose from. Tick Inner Shadow, Drop Shadow, and Gradient Overlay. Now you're going to tweak the styles. This will help them look more realistic. So click the Inner Shadow tab first. And start with the following settings. Blend Mode, choose Multiply with Black as the color. Always have Global Light ticked here. For opacity, go ahead and change that to 50% with a distance of 2 pixels and a size of 4 pixels. Set the angle to 90 degrees. Next, click the Drop Shadow tab. And you can move this over so that you can preview what's happening as you're working. From the Drop Shadow tab, set the Blend Mode to Normal. Change the color to white and then choose an opacity of 55%. You can just type it in here. Again, you'll use global light with an angle of 90 and the distance set to 3 pixels. Then set the size to 3 pixels as well. 
and spread at zero. Finally, tweak the gradient by clicking the Gradient Overlay tab. Set the blend mode to normal with an opacity of 7%. Use the black and white gradient. It's the third gradient here in the default gradients. Set the style to linear with an angle of 90 degrees and the scale at 125%. Remember that you can preview all of these settings as you work and feel free to change the values to get the look that you want for your paper choice. For instance, you could try different gradients to get really creative looks. So if I chose a different gradient here, like this rainbow one, you get some really interesting coloring going on in your shadows. And you can change the other settings as well. When you're satisfied with the way it looks, click OK. Your brush will look pressed into the paper, giving your project a fresh new look. Thanks so much for watching this week's video and be sure to check back in two weeks for another Designer Digitals tip.